right, we'll move over sriracha and cronuts. There are some new food trends in town, and people are watching out for them big time this year. Registered dietitian Andrea Hallwagner is here. She's showing us just a few because every year there's something new that comes up. First of all, thanks so much for being here. Great Thank to you see for you. Having me. We got a little bit of everything this morning, but we're going to start down here. Okay. And it's not just yogurt. I know that's what everyone's seeing, but we're talking about fermented foods. From I know this isn't quite it as exciting as National Cupcake Day, no, which that's I hear is right. happening today. It is National Cupcake Day. That does not fit into fermented foods. When I think fermented <laughs> foods, I think beer and wine. That's the first thing I think of. There you go. And th those are the <laughs> things that we think of naturally. Um, of course, yogurt is a, a really common fermented food that, okay. that we probably haven't thought of in that way. Right. Um, and I wanted to bring a couple of other things to you to talk about. Great, um, one great. is kefir. Okay. And this is actually, it's more of a drinkable style yogurt. And it's, it's again got a little bit more of a sour based taste, but a lot of people love it. Okay. And way more probiotic function in a kefir than in a yogurt. Oh, I see. So okay. if you're looking for that healthy digestive yes. um, properties that a yogurt traditionally offers, this, even a small little tablespoon added into um, a smoothie or something can really oh, kick up that natural probiotic. And that's Good really boost. what we're getting out of fermented foods, such as your okay. sauerkraut, your kimchi, um, which is more of a vegetable-based um um, cabbage? cabbage. Okay, yeah, cabbage, yeah. peppers, things like that, uh, Korean-based. Right. Wonderful for those fermented foods, good for overall digestive health. For digestion. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. the big thing there. I you just got it. started to see this kefir in the stores, so okay. that's probably going to be the new trend that picks up I a lot. I see that there, you're going to see a little bit more yeah. of this in the, in the chef culinary foods. Oh, you're gonna, good. You're, you're going to see more of this okay. happening. Because last year it was just Greek yogurt, Greek yogurt, Greek yogurt, so that's interesting that we're going to see that shift. Let's talk about teas, because that's what everyone seems to be talking about now. Just well, and yet, every kind you, of Go to the mall or the airport. We've got tea shops. You know, yeah. David's Tea is popping up everywhere. Yes. Starbucks is even in the tea business. Big time. Yeah. They purchased Tea Havana for over six hundred billion dollars. And right. so, if Starbucks is looking to be <laughs> in the tea right. business. There's got to be some trending in this. Right. So, of course, the most common beverage outside of water consumed worldwide. And nutritionally, awesome stuff happening here. Okay. So, if you love tea, whether it's black, green, white, um, tea lattes, wonderful nutrition in there. Okay. Good for those flavonoids or those antioxidants that are naturally uh, good for overall heart health, right. potentially even cancer prevention. So Any good concern stuff about caffeine rates? Because I, you always hear this, that some teas have actually more caffeine than coffee, and then that always is a big thing in the nutrition world, right? Yeah, and if you look weight for weight, certainly right. tea has more caffeine in it, but when we look how it brews, um, typically the average cup of tea has about half of the amount of caffeine as coffee. Okay. Even when brewed pretty strong as okay. a black or a green style tea. Okay. So a great thing to do, um, one of my favorites in the summer, although it's winter and it's freezing, you know, but I hey, know. <laughs> if you're bored of water... It's true though, yeah, yeah. What I did here, I mixed um, one of the green teas. This one's a mango passion fruit acai. Put a little lemon and blueberries in there. If you put that in the fridge, yeah. this might be a little more appealing than just a glass of water as an afternoon right. you know, uh, beverage. And certainly nutritious. And better than going for the fruit juice or, you know, those high sugar juices or sodas, I guess, at that. Sure, or you can put too. even a little splash of a juice in here. So mix yeah. a little juice with some tea and it dilutes those calories for you. It gives you, again, some good nutrition in there. I love that. I love yeah. that. Okay, let's talk about cauliflower. This is... The new kale is the what new I'm kale. hearing. Which you got I've it. been waiting for the new kale. I wonder if there's a national cauliflower day. I'm I curious. I'm going to be it. surprised. You've got three different styles here, but why is cauliflower now making a trend? It's certainly not a new vegetable. Well, chefs love it because it's a um, it's got a mild enough flavor. It can really infuse and blend with things. And then, yeah. of course, nutritionists we love it because anything coming from the brassica family, your broccoli's, Brussels sprouts, kales, cauliflower, wonderful for cancer prevention. Okay. Great. Great antioxidants in here. Awesome for vitamin C, for fiber. They're super low in calories, so great thing you can even blend in with your mashed potatoes. Oh, okay, Pure good. blended um, cauliflower with a mashed potato is, it, it will trick even the best I know. mashed potato lovers. It's true. I, you hear so many about vegetables from nutritionists, though. you got to go for those deep, deep, leafy greens. It sounds like the cauliflower has just as much benefit. Even though it's white, it's got yeah. wonderful nutrition in there. Or you can go for the green one just you to make yourself feel green. better, right? You know, I was at the Farmers Market and Calgary Co-op actually uh, on the weekend, and they yeah. both carried the green cauliflower. You're also going to see orange, yellows, and purple Purples. cauliflowers, um, and they're not something strange and obscure. They're actually very heirloom-based, naturally normal things that have been found for years. We just haven't seen them on the grocery shelves. And quickly, Andrew, we only have about 15 seconds. This is your favorite way to prepare cauliflower. Favorite. Just tell me quickly what is Chop it. Chop it up. 
throw a little olive oil, salt, pepper, roast it into the oven until it gets mm. brown and caramelized. It's so sweet. sweet. It, That's it, what I was going to say. It brings out that natural sweetness. My favorite way to cook cauliflower. Not quite as good as a cupcake. <laughs> I'm not going to on this not national lie. cupcake day. <laughs> that is pretty good. Listen, if you want to find out more about Andrea Hall Wagner or just go onto our website and find out more information, you can go to healthstandnutrition.com. Andrea, thanks so much for being here. That Thank actually you. is really good. All right, let's head over to our Stephanie Brennan and take a look at this cold, cold day, Steph. I actually feel a little good about myself because I've been in the tea trend for a long time now. So thanks for that, Andrea. And of course, makes you feel better about National Cupcake Day. But hey, all proceeds going to the Humane Society. Taking a look across Alberta for